Well, hello everyone. Now, Shri and I are here again to inform you about all the big changes and exciting events that are going to be happening in the month of May. We're going to be going over all of the charts and looking at my goodness, we have some amazing events about to occur. And one of them is the lunar eclipse that we're going to be talking about in great detail. And it's about to bring an enormous change that I want everyone to be prepared for. So this is going to give you great insight and guidance for the month of May. So Shri, you want to add anything to my opening <laughs> announcement about how much this month is about to change? Oh my God, Joni, the energies in the sky right now, it's amazing. So many changes, so many transitions. We are in the middle of eclipse season, right? This That's is eclipse exactly. season. Right. And Mercury is retrograde, Jupiter changed signs. I mean, it has been a very volatile month of April. And I think May is going to continue and kind of follow the same trend. Uh, so many changes happening. I can't wait to get into these predictions. <laughs> I know, me too. <laughs> well, I know everybody's experiencing Mercury retrograde because it started to go retrograde. What was it? The 21st of April. Yes. And it's going to continue to be retrograde till May 15th. And that's why a lot of you are feeling kind of uneasy and a lot of, you know, things just aren't going forward the way you intended. But this is a transitional period. This is what I really feel. Things are in transition and the biggest changes are about to unfold. And as you mentioned, Shri, it's the eclipse season. What happens during eclipses? But things come out of the dark. Things come out of the blue that we didn't even think about. And it catches us a little blindsided. But hey, with this, with this reading here that we're going to give you, you're going to be prepared. So do we want to start with the chart, Shri, right now? Yes, yes. Go I'm ahead. going to share the screen. So let's go back to the beginning of May so that we can start at the very beginning. <laughs> Good. Let, let's do it. Okay, guys, here we go. May 1st. So the very first thing that's happening in May, that is, I mean, there's a few good transits happening earlier on, but this is important because on May 5th, we have the lunar eclipse. Right. It's uh, happening at 21 degrees. So while I'm moving this uh, to make it 21 degrees, we can talk about it. Just give me one second. It's at 1, 1.34 p.m., I believe. Yes, it is. <clears throat> 1.34 p.m. Right here, guys. Okay. So around 20, 21 degrees. So let me just move it a little bit more so we can make it exactly 21 right there. Yes. So 21 degrees of Aries and Libra, we have the lunar eclipse happening. And here's the thing with, with eclipses, like Joni was saying, it brings things that were hidden out into the open. Now, I don't know if I told you, Joni, this past couple of weeks, a lot of my clients who came to me for readings, they said that in their personal life, they were finding out things that they never knew happened before. I know, that's... That it's, that's so true. That's what eclipses do. And it's shocking, isn't yes. it? Yes. Yes. And, you know, it's like you you look at a person a certain way for a long period of time and then the eclipse happens and you see a totally different side. Know. You know, events that you never knew had transpired, they, they come out into the open. Exactly. But I feel like it leads to healing because, you know, hidden things, you know, it's it's always like that illusion, right? You think something is some way. But when things become apparent, when they come out into the open, it leads to healing because now you can kind of, you know, process this information and move on. Right. Um, so this is the lunar eclipse. It's happening in the Aries Libra axis. Boy, this Aries, the sign of Aries is so active <laughs> This these I few know. months. I, I can't believe it. I mean, if you have your ascendant or moon in Aries, guys, this is you know, this few months is going to be a lot of changes for you. 
you know. Or Libra, by the way, because Libra is the opposite sign. Yes. And you've got to pay attention to Libra because that's where K2 and the moon are. And that's where things will be revealed from the darkness. Yes. And, you know, a lot of times it deals with love. Why? Because Libra is love and Venus being the dispositing planet deals with that in particular. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. I think so, too. I mean, this particular lunar eclipse, uh, again, you know, um, take the time to heal your life, to transform your life. You may take some time to process what is going on because you will see a lot of things coming out into the open, even in the world, I believe, because, you know, the sign of Aries is about new beginnings. It's it is the yeah. sign that deals with travel. Um, so, you know, we, we do see a lot of things coming out into the open in those areas. Right. And you know, with this eclipse, the sun sits at 20, 21 degrees of Aries. Well, Uranus and Mercury surround it. And mm -hmm. what do they deal with? Mercury deals with travel and with it being retrograde, you better be careful, you know, all the way till the 15th of May with your travel plans because they'll go haywire. And I don't mean any major catastrophe, but I mean delays, computer problems. Uranus yeah. rules computers, my God. So you know there's going to be down downs and, you know, with airplanes and airports and all of that, the computer systems will be delayed going down and maybe there's just mechanicals with the airplanes things of this nature when mercury's retrograde but uranus really exaggerates it all the more because uranus rules technology and it also rules airplanes machinery so, too ex exactly and then ashwini where jupiter rahu are that nakshatra is called the star of transport mm -hmm. so it deals with traveling that's why there's so much dealing with traveling that is going to be crazy uncontrolled you know unexpected things remember uranus rules change and unexpected sudden events and that's what we're looking at with travel, with Aries, and, you know, with the moon being in Libra, there's all these relationship issues. Remember, eclipses, oppositions always deal with some kind of a relationship issues. So all of us need to look deeper into how we relate with our partners, our friends, our family, and take a deeper look and really ask yourself, are you coming from the right place with how you're responding to the craziness in people's mm -hmm. lives? <laughs> yeah. I agree. And, and you know what's crazy, Joni, is right after this, four days, four or five days, sun rolls over Uranus. Right. You know, so if, if I make this May 9th, as you guys can see here, look at that exact 24 degrees. Yes, Sun and I, Uranus. I want to add something very important that I know everyone needs to know about. Now, yes. let me remind everyone that if you sign up for my free newsletter, and it's absolutely free, you can go to my website, galacticcenter.org, sign up for that. I can say things in my newsletter that I cannot put out on most social media platforms, especially YouTube. Because it's very censored. Um, you know, I got to say that. And I hope I can say that. We have to be so careful these days. But let me just say this. With Uranus crossing over the sun, the sun represents leadership and people in power, presidents, kings all over the world. And with Uranus, there's going to be a sudden upset or a sudden exciting thing that comes out. And let me just say especially with the way that Saturn is aspecting Mercury and throughout this month. And let me look, yes, that there's going to be the sign of Leo is receiving the aspect this month of both Jupiter and Saturn. And what does Leo deal with? Another indicator for kings and leaders and presidents mm -hmm. around the world. So here's the situation at hand. Someone is going to come out of left field pretty much that we weren't looking at before and it's going to take the media and the world by storm. 
and it's going to be ex extremely exciting Uranus, right? But there's going to be somebody that comes and it's going to come into popularity, maybe somebody running for president, something to that nature. But you're going to see that there's going to be a huge uproar and change this month of May about all this. I will keep you guys posted as much as I can. So just remember my newsletter. Uh, if you want to get further insights, you can sign up for that. But we're going to leave it at that today, that we're seeing astrologically the month of May, someone is going to come into huge popularity that we didn't notice or see before. You know how right before an election, somebody just comes out of nowhere? It's kind of like the way Obama did, yeah. you know? So somebody's going to come out of nowhere and... Right. Or, or even Trump, Joni, because I remember when Trump uh, announced he was running, it was um, Jupiter and Venus together yes. in Leo. I remember that. Yes, and yeah. I'll tell you something else. Venus in the summer months is going to go into Leo and go retrograde mm -hmm. and go yes. back and forth and stay in Leo a very long time. Yes, we're going to see an amazing shift and change, and it's all going to start this month. Leo is leadership. And, and it's it's the ruling government. So I, I can absolutely see that. I'm so excited to see that come to pass. Yeah. And and you're right, Joni, your newsletter has so much information that you know we can't really share here. Uh, and also the Shooting Star series oh my that God. Joni holds. Every Tuesday, we all come together and we meet and it's completely uncensored. We can yes. talk about all the things that we are not able to talk about on social media. And, uh, you know, all these predictions, exactly. right? All the, the, the reality, the truth that astrology and the stars and the heavens are showing us. So yes. uh, we don't have to hold back there. <laughs> In shooting stars, we all talk one-on-one. -on -one. This is, you know, it is a group conversation. We get down to the bottom of things. So if you don't know about my shooting stars, look it up. It's also, you can sign up for that on the website. It's every Tuesday at noon. And we talk about the deeper aspects of spirituality and how to transform and change your life, actually do the spiritual yeah. practices and keeping on track so that we can change and transform our own lives. That's what we're all here to do. So that station, right, Joni? I mean, I love, that's what I love about the shooting star series. You teach us how to manifest Exactly, um, and and you know positive um, realizations in life, and because you know, I mean, with everything that's going on in the world today, we need something like that exactly. to uplift us and uplift humanity. You know, exactly. so it's beautiful. Mm -hmm. So now, after that, here's what happens after that. Notice the Mars twenty nine degrees of Gemini. Yes. The very next day, <laughs> it goes into Cancer. I mean, this is. I'm, I'm telling you, Joni, these. A couple of months, April and May have been so volatile, and I, I, I don't even want to start with June. We'll talk about that I in a little know. bit. <laughs> we'll but... talk about that in great <laughs> detail, but what do we both, Shri and I, have been conversing about this Mars, which is going to be in Cancer May 10th till July 1st. And Mars rules real estate in Vedic astrology. Mm -hmm. It's debilitated in Cancer. What do you think that's all about? Well, I think we pretty well know the housing markets are going to change. The price is going to come down, <clears throat> but probably the interest rate is going to go way up. So there's this huge imbalance and it's an incredible change. What do you see about that tree? It's it's your sense of security. Mars is real estate right. home, but it rules your sense of security. So <clears> when <throat> it's debilitated in cancer, we sometimes feel a little insecure. We feel like things around us are out of control, right. you know, and also when we were talking about the sun Uranus, you know, that's, um, you know, issues with our leadership. You know, even at work, your superiors, your bosses, that's not a great day, by the way, to have meetings with your with your leaders at work, right. uh, because it can be very unpredictable. You may say something, it may be perceived as, as something completely different. And here you have Mars debilitated. And you know, another thing about Mars and Cancer, Joni, that in, in personal charts, when we do readings, what I've noticed is they tend to not know how to express their frustration at things you know they they like they bury it they put it down they push it down you know mm -hmm. um and when i whenever i see in world events when mars goes into cancer it causes explosive events 
because right. you haven't expressed it constructively over a period of time you've pushed it down and then it explodes so that you know it, it is very volatile in cancer it's a water sign mars being there it's it's not a very great placement for it but like you said real estate gets affected because that's mars <laughs> yeah. and um you know, another thing, Joni, also is, you know, May 12th, which is a couple of days after this, you have Saturn aspecting Mercury. Mm -hmm. You know, Mercury is already retrograde, right? Uh, okay. Saturn can pull that energy down a little further. Uh, you feel blocked, you feel stagnant, you feel like things are not moving forward. Um, and anyway, you know, when Mercury is retrograde, we already feel like that. But Saturn can bring about a, a little bit more of a gloom to that picture. Uh, sure. But I was just thinking about it. And earlier we were talking about it too. Mercury rules writing. And with Saturn's aspect on it, just to look on the brighter side a little bit, mm -hmm. it can give you discipline. It can give you focus. You know, that's what yeah. Saturn rules. It's a yeah. great time to journal, to write. Um, but again, you know, if you're starting new things or thinking of, new plants that you want to you know put into motion uh, that saturn can cause some delays in that area right i agree totally you know people that have a saturn mercury conjunction in their birth chart their navamsha and especially if they have them in both they're writers because they can focus so mm -hmm. yeah that is mercury is writing saturn is discipline put them together and we have someone that's a disciplined focused writer and yes i have them both aspects i was just thinking about that <laughs> yeah in both my birth chart and my navumption i'll never forget many many years ago the great chakrapani uh from my chart told me he said joni you're a writer because yeah. because of that, because Mercury is being asked, Mercury is conjunct Saturn in my birth chart, and they're opposed to each other in my Navamsha. So Navamsha. They, they beautiful. Ask. And I remember the story you told me about how you wrote your three outer planets books. Yeah. You know, you just like got it done. What in a, in a matter of a month? <laughs> well, you know, I actually because I sat still for so long writing those books just focused continually focused actually i developed a back problem from oh my gosh still, but it went away after i after i published the books it's funny how focused i became i didn't move for days <laughs> yeah, it's discipline it's focus and discipline yes. that's saturn with mercury it happens again by the way it happens around may 19th when they move forward a little bit more yeah. so it's a couple of days there that you can use for writing for journaling mm -hmm. uh now on may 15th uh sun is going to enter taurus so happy birthday to everybody who has sun in taurus uh, it's mm -hmm. your solar return time frame um wishing you the very best with that um and another thing with sun and taurus joni i always think think about the financial markets economy and money mm -hmm. you know when sun goes into taurus you see a lot of things changing in that area and you know of course this is not a rare thing right it happens once right. a year right um but I think what really makes it um, pertinent this time is the fact that you have all these other transits going on too, right? You mm -hmm. have Saturn aspecting all these planets in Aries. You have Sun in Taurus just now. And then Mars is also in Cancer. So mm -hmm. with all of that happening, you know, this is uh, a time when, you know, financial markets can change. This is a very volatile time. And also I've seen, you know, you would probably like spending time in nature at this time. Because, you know, that's what Taurus rules. It's nature. It's going out hiking and walking. And, you know, when all of this stuff is going on in the news and, you know, the, the illusion around you is a lot, that's the time to go back to nature, to connect and, you know, kind of connect to your own center. Wow. Um, that's beautiful that you have that there. And another thing I also wanted to mention, Joni, was this year we have a lot of Parivartana yogas happening. So we'll right. come to that too. <laughs> Right. When I think about Taurus, I think about that. Exactly. Um, here's another thing that's happening May 15th. That's a very important day. Not only sun going into Taurus, you have Mercury going direct. Exactly. I love Mercury going direct, but I do want everyone to be aware about Mercury's retrograde process. It's when it changes direction, which of course, when it goes retrograde, and then again, when it moves direct, those particular days are very confusing. So don't 
Don't get in the mindset, oh, Mercury's direct today. Now I can move forward. No, it changed its direction. And guess what happens when it changes from direct to retrograde or retrograde to direct? People change their minds. Yeah. And mm -hmm. uh, if you are traveling on the days, I don't care if it is moving direct, it's still stationary and it's more powerful and it's changed. So those particular days are the most hectic for travel. And I don't, you know, it's not going to be anything horrible. It's just, it's hectic. I know this for sure. I was a flight attendant most, you know, for many years of my life. And trust me, I worked through many retrogrades on the plane. And I noticed on those days where when there were cancellations, uh, mechanicals, just delays like crazy. So those days are not, you know, wait till Mercury starts to move forward in speed, then things start to calm down. And there's even this whole uh, process called the shadow period. And I'll explain it really quick, but uh, it's kind of complicated. It's like when Mercury turns retrograde, well, first it's moving direct before it ever goes retrograde. And when it's moving direct, it's going through those degrees that Mercury will be traveling retrograde in before it goes retrograde. That means Mercury's in its shadow. And that's why before Mercury ever goes direct, you feel it's retrograde. You're going, is Mercury retrograde? It feels like it is, but it's not yet. And then once it turns direct, it's still got to travel through those degrees that it was retrograde previously. And until it clears those degrees is when everything moves forward, you know, powerfully. But all I, all I do know is once Mercury don't, you know, you don't have to pay attention so much to all the shadow period and stuff, but I wanted you to know what it is. But once it does turn direct, give it a few days till it starts to pick up speed moving forward. Then everything starts to clear out and people are settled with their minds and opinions and the change that has occurred. Okay. Yeah. I agree, Joni. I mean, people think that the day it goes direct, you know, it's great. It can start with everything. But you have to remember the planet, the speed is very slow. Mm -hmm. So it has to pick up speed. It has to be faster for it to really be direct. So I, I, you know, I'm glad you explained the concept of the shadow period. A lot of people don't know that. Yeah. Now, another thing I noticed, Joni, here is Rahu and Ashwini and Ketu and Swati, which has been going on for a while, but that's an exchange of those, those nodes, you know, the Ashwini rule by Ketu, Rahu is in it and Swati rule by Rahu, Ketu is in it. So, mm -hmm. you know, the nodes are not doing great right now because they are in each other's signs, right? Uh, right. Ketu is... Ketu is to do with spirituality. It doesn't particularly like to be in Rahu's nakshatra, which has to do with materialism. Mm -hmm. And uh, same thing with Rahu. And the reason I noticed this is, Joni, in our magazine in the month of May, you guys have to look at this magazine. This is going to be an amazing array of articles that we have. So this magazine, one of our articles written by Barry Rosen is exactly about what we just talked about. Rahu and Ketu exchanging signs. Yeah. And this particular magazine, Joni, I know you, you know, you were on vacation. You probably haven't seen some of the articles, but this is beautiful. And we look at it in the next couple of days before we publish it. We always do that. We sit together and look through everything yeah. and edit it. Yeah. But um, it's a beautiful, uh, uh, you know, array of articles. We have um, the interview, the featured interview this month is Kapil Raj, who is a very popular astrologer yeah. and YouTuber. And I, many of you may know him. Mm -hmm. And he has, uh, you know, he was gracious enough to give us uh, an opportunity to interview him. And he talked to us about his childhood. And, you know, it was it was a beautiful interview. So, you know, that's definitely something you don't want to miss. Yes. And then um, we have who's in the news is Emmanuel Macron. Um, you know, and that as a beautiful article by Odilia um, with that. And uh, what else is there? Um, let me see. We well, have, let me just oh. say, I always write one about the stocks, what, what yes. stock to invest <laughs> in. 
And I'm not going to give it away, but oh my God, there's a stock that's amazing because they pretty much found a drug that reverses Parkinson's disease. And I go into great detail about that particular stock in my stock pick. And of course, my spiritual insights are always in the magazine. And uh, yeah, who else is in the magazine this month? So we have a wonderful article, Joni, from your student, Sarah, uh, who was a, was a graduate of the university and her friend, Girish. And they wrote about how to diagnose cancer mm -hmm. by looking at a person's that is chart. amazing. Yes. I've always, I mean, this has been a, a, you know, a passionate thing for me because, you know, medical astrology. That's mm -hmm. medical astrology. They talk about Rahu. They talk about, you guys have to read this article, amazing celebrity examples uh, to put forth their uh, their uh, theories. And I love this kind of articles because it's research. It's bringing right. out things which we have not known before. It's new things. This is the astrology of the future. Mm -hmm. uh, so this is a beautiful article. And then, it, of course, we have Rukmini with her tarot card predictions for the month, which is always so eye-opening and insightful. And we have predictions by Michelle Bond. Again, monthly predictions. You guys love that. We got a lot of emails from you guys talking about how you know perfect and on point they are. Mm -hmm. And uh, we have Alan Anand who comes back with an article with Ber about Bernie Madoff. So that was also a very beautiful article. And then we have Vastu Shastra. So, you know, this, this magazine, guys, it is about bringing ancient knowledge into modern day and how to use it in modern day practice. Mm -hmm. So we not only have Vedic astrology, we have Vastu Shastra, we have tarot. And we have a financial astrology. We have medical astrology. This is not, you know, it's not just a couple of articles. This is a whole book. Beautiful. So um, make sure you click the link below this video and buy the magazine for this month. And actually, it's much cheaper if you do the whole year subscription. So, you know, you don't want to miss this issue, by and the way. It's <laughs> only $9.99 for all that knowledge. Mm -hmm. That's amazing, I think. Yeah, <laughs> and it's beautiful articles. Every month I get astounded by how, the you know, the submissions. The, we get so many submissions, guys, by the way, for the magazine. And each time we read it, we are like, wow, this is really good research. This is this is good work, you know. So yeah. make sure you 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 know make use of that resource if you're interested in astrology. There's it's beautiful. There's nothing out there like it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I agree, I Joan. I can't wait to read the uh the review about Kapil, I think that's so exciting. I mean, I just love Kapil. He's an amazing astrologer. Yes. And I'm looking forward to reading. He is. His YouTube, uh, so many people have learned from his YouTube channels. You he know, it's really just... has. He's opened Vedic astrology to the world yes. on YouTube. I mean, we are in great awe of him and what he's done for the field of Vedic astrology. Thank you, Kapil. Yes. <laughs> So, so make sure you don't miss his interview. See how he became an astrologer, how, how you know, what his childhood was and how he came to where he is today. And that's, you know, oh, it's, it's a, really candid. It's beautiful. Yeah. All right. So okay. what's going on right now? So May 19th, guys, the new moon. What's mm -hmm. the next thing that's happening? So let me move this to May 19th. We have the new moon right here. Around, uh, I think it's going to be around four degrees. So I, I need to move this yeah. a little bit, but around four degrees of Taurus. This is, you have a lot to talk about this journey, yeah. <laughs> right? Yeah. It is in the Nakshatra Kritika. Yes. And Kritika, you know, the symbology is a sharp blade. Yes. So you're very direct, you know, there's right. no sugar coating anything. <laughs> exactly. That's what I love about that nakshatra. It gets to the darn point. No yes. going around or nonsense. It's like, let's have, let's have it. Let's get to the point. Let's get to the truth. That's Kritika. Yeah. And the, the thing I like about Kritika is in the world of illusion today, I love this nakshatra because there is no illusion with it. You know? <laughs> I agree. It's like, it's like, you know, let's just say it as it is, right? We don't need any of that. So, and it's in the sign of Taurus. So it's in the financial markets, everything that we have been seeing to come to pass in the past few months, they all come out into the open. Not only did the eclipse happen almost, you know, I think around a couple of weeks before that, but with the new moon happening, what is the new moon? It's new beginnings. 
-hmm. Everything's starting fresh, you know, Mercury went direct and uh, we have a new moon happening. And uh, another thing also is, you know, remember when you look at this, there's uh, this Mars is still in cancer. So there is a sense of violence, you know, there could be that around the world. Um, you know, Taurus is banking and financial institutions. So, you know, we have seen a lot of things going on with that over the past few months since December. Uh, so I think this new moon is a new beginning for, um, you know, a new way to do banking. And mm -hmm. for the financial institutions, people are realizing things that they never knew before about these institutions that have existed for so many years. You and know, let me, so let me point out something else that I just realized about Mars being in Cancer, that it's going to be in the eighth house of the United States chart yeah. for you know from May 10th till July 1st. So you're going to see major shifts in economy. And what else? What's the eighth house deal with scandals, a corruption with the United States, with money, finances, and leaders? I mean, everything, like with the eclipses, this is eclipse season, is going to be exposed. We're going to see some truth, some reality about corruption, truth, leadership, money, banks. All of this is coming out while Mars is in camp. Absolutely. And you know why there is hope, Joni, is, you know, when you look at all this and you look a few days later and you see Jupiter's coming up on Rahu, mm -hmm. that's why there is hope. There is hope I... for, for healing here because yeah. Jupiter is spirituality. It's, it's understanding the great truth and, you know, healing. And it comes with Rahu, which magnifies all that energy. So, and that happens towards, um, you know, in, in a few days after that, it's already like very close. You can see June, um, sorry, it's at six degrees and nine degrees. Mm -hmm. um, so it's going to be towards the end of the month. And we, we'll talk a lot more in detail about that. But what I was trying to say is when you see these difficult transits going on, if you look a little further, you see something positive like that happening, you know that the outcome of this is going to be healing and hope and happiness in the end. I agree. So that's that's good to see that. Now, mm -hmm. another interesting... Yeah, go now, ahead. So Jenny. what about that Jupiter-Rahu coming together? I mean, and even Mercury is going to come together with Uranus. Oh my yeah. God. This is like, it's all it's all now starting to build. Because uh, I don't know if we should jump to the where Jupiter is going to be conjunct Rahu towards the very end of the month. Be before and that, Joni, we have this happening here, which I thought we should talk about because the nodes, <laughs> notice the nodes and notice what's happening right at the midpoint of the nodes. Oh, my God. I didn't see that. You are right. <laughs> <clears throat> you have Mars exactly at the midpoint of the nodes. Mm -hmm. And, you know, when Joni teaches us, um, you know, the University of Vedic Astrology, I remember, Joni, I think it's your lesson on the eclipses. You talk about this a lot. Mm -hmm. Whenever a planet like Mars, which is a trigger planet, comes exactly yes. at the midpoint of the nodes, that's a trigger event. Okay. Yes. So the 26th of May, and it's not a great time to make new beginnings during that time because Mars can sometimes be a little volatile, especially because it's right in between the nodes. It mm -hmm. is a destiny point though. Let me tell you that because that's what the nodes are. The nodes are destiny, it's karma. So it's basically karmic retribution, right? It's things right. that, you know, people have done in the past are coming out into the open now and it's like they have to face the music. Right. But the Mars being exactly at the midpoint, it's a trigger event, right, Joni? What do you think about that? Oh, I can't. Yeah, I can't tell you enough. And you know what I have seen even with Mars? Well, you know, being in the eighth house of the United States chart, there's a trigger event. People are going to be angry about all the corruption, finances, money. But you know what else I've seen? Mars going to the trigger point, but also at the midpoint of Rahu and K2, seen a, I've seen earthquakes happen around this time. Oh, yeah. Major events. Mm -hmm. Remember, even Uranus, which is powerfully placed, deals with earthquakes and Mars being there. I mean, there's going to be, 
I think, you know, the earth is going to be shaking from all the events and people and emotion that's going on at this time. It's a big deal. That is a huge trigger. And Mars also can be violence, of course, war and violence and discord. So, yeah, the, things are going to be very insecure and uneasy. Cancer is the sign of protection and deals with, you know, the Security. protection, mm -hmm. even in Pusha, which is the um, Mars is in Pusha, which is the nakshatra that deals with nurturing and protection. We're going to need it. Mm -hmm. I agree. Now, the good thing that happens is a few days after that, on May 31st, you have Jupiter conjunct Rahu. I love it. And, you know, this is this is the reason why I was saying earlier with, with everything that we saw during this month, uh, in spite of all that, I feel the month is going to still end on a good note because of the Jupiter and Rahu coming together. And this is one of the reasons, Joni, right? You you chose this as a time for your uh, conference in Dallas. Yes. Oh, my gosh. So Jupiter, Rahu. I know that, that that Rahu is actually a malefic planet. You put Jupiter with it. It can magnify things. But Jupiter loves to be an Aries. And don't it forget does. that. That is the, Aries is the uh, ruler of Mars. So, you know, the dispositing planet of this Jupiter Rahu is actually Mars. But what happens towards the end of this month is monumental. And yes, I planned my Dallas conference, Vedic Astrology Conference in Dallas during this time based on this transit. And the Parivartana that's going to be happening. Look at the planets at this day. Venus is in Cancer, ruled by the moon. And the moon is in Libra, ruled by Venus. So beautiful. we have this beautiful exchange of signs between moon Venus and the Jupiter Rahu conjunction and it's aspecting the moon. This is an amazing day of revelations, beautiful learning, transformations. I know everything's going to change because Jupiter likes to be in Aries. This is a big difference with it being with Rahu. But the conference I put together, I got to say, guys, if you don't know about this, you have got to check it out. We have some of the most amazing speakers I think in the world in Vedic astrology, we have James Braha coming, Mark Boney, Kapil Raj. I mean, I'm going to be speaking. Juliana Swanson, Ronnie Gale Dreyer. This, these are these are the some of the most knowledgeable people in the industry. We're all coming together in Dallas. If, in case you don't know about it, you can still sign up and come. And let me tell you something else, airfare will be, air, flying will be fine at this time. Airfare is cheap to Dallas, easy to get to. And it is going to be June 2nd through the 5th, Dallas, Texas. And down, you know, we're, we'll have the link to click in. It's And the website is futureofastrology.com because I believe this is the future of astrology where we're going with Vedic astrology. You'll want to be part of this new beginning. And, yes. uh, and look at all the planets in Aries, guys. This is a new beginning. Thank you. you know, this is going to be a one of a kind conference. And I'm, you know, I've been in conferences before. I've never seen such a stellar lineup of yes. uh, speakers. It's amazing. And here's the thing. You look at these planets. Uh, Joni, I was just looking at I it while say you were one talking. Thing I okay. forgot to say, Shree's going to be speaking. <laughs> <laughs> and she's an amazing speaker, as you can see here. We're going to learn so much. But go ahead. I'm sorry for interrupting. I was looking at these planets, a stellium happening in Aries, Joni. And it is so descriptive of our conference. It Jupiter. Is. Jupiter is spirituality. It's higher learning. It's enlightenment. Rahu, Rahu magnifies things. And it's also foreigners and foreign lands. By the way, we have so many people who have booked tickets who are coming from foreign places to, to come to this conference. Yes. Yes. Mercury, Mercury is learning. It's teaching. It's, and it's, it's with gathering. Uranus. Look yes. at that. It's with Uranus. And during the time of the conference, Mercury will be conjunct Uranus. Uranus is the planet of astrology. Astrology. Beautiful. Yes. And the moon's right there. And, you know, and another thing is, you know, with Mercury, 
it's connecting with people. It's getting together. Exactly. It's communities. It's it's everybody coming together and being, you know, and and understanding this amazing ancient science of astrology. All these people that you guys have met on YouTube over so many years, you know, we consider these as our great teachers, you know, Dr. Joe Vitali and James Braha and Mark Boney and Joni Patri and Juliana Swanson and KRS, Kapil Raj and Ronnie Gale Dreyer. All of these amazing, amazing, um, you know, astrologers who have done this for what, 20, 30, 40 years, and you have met them over YouTube virtually, well, now is your chance to meet them all in person. Because when we when we have these conferences, guys, and I don't know if you've been to any of our previous conferences, but Joni, I'm going to talk about how fun it is. Because we do learn, we learn a lot. Because some of these talks, like Mark Boney is going to give us an amazing three-hour class on Germany astrology. I mean, he is the authority on it. You know, and we had James Braha talking about his Braha Sutras. And we have Joni herself talking about, uh, you know, her uh, outer planets and amazing uh, books that she has written. But here's the thing. Learning is one thing. But when the conference is not happening and we all talk to each other, we have lunch together, we have together, we, we meet each other outside in the corridors or when we are buying the books that are there for sale, that's when we connect with each other. That's your opportunity. All these people you've met on YouTube, it's, it's, you can meet them in person and you can connect with them. And that's what I really look forward to, Joni. Because, uh, you know, these talks and, you know, we can always take classes. We can, you know, do all of that uh, in virtually too, right? Everything is virtual these days. We can learn from YouTube. But the, the highlight of the conference is this over here. Look at that Mercury, Rahu, Jupiter. It's about right. connecting and talking to everybody and understanding through those conversations that we have one-on-one, -on -one, you know, about astrology. We are talking about what we all love the most, right. <laughs> you know, That's it's amazing. Right. You know, just the, the, and, and you see a different side to these celebrities. I like to call them celebrities because they have done this for so long on YouTube. They're amazing at what they do. You see their other side. You see the personal side because you get to talk to them and interact with them. Mm -hmm. This is this is a one, once in a lifetime opportunity. Let me tell you that. So, you know, make sure you check it out. And, you know, for, for the price it is right now, the price is going to go up in a couple of days. Right. Yes. Uh, so this is your opportunity to buy the ticket and, and come to the conference. Yes. Say, save money too. Yes. It's good. The price is going to go up. So check it out as quick as possible. It's yes. coming up here. And yes. one more thing I might mention, like we've mentioned the Parivartana between the moon Venus at the end of the month. Well, right after that, when the moon goes into Scorpio, you're thinking, oh, it's debilitated. That's not so hot. What? Why would you plan a conference at that time? Well, because that debilitation is completely changed because if you'll notice Mars, which is debilitated in cancer, we all know that, Mars will be in Cancer, and Cancer is ruled by the moon. So if you go to the moon, the moon is in Scorpio, ruled by Mars. This is another Parivartana between the moon and Mars. And Parivartanas completely change the energy. It's probably the most powerful way that planets can be connected. And it's yeah. like the moon is in is in cancer, cancer and Mars is in Scorpio. So very, very powerful. And don't forget, we have a full moon, full moon. It's a bright moon. I love to have conferences during full moons because it brings awareness. It lights up the darkness of the sky and brings awareness in truth. This is a spectacular time of year. Watch how everything transforms and changes. And we're going to be together as a group watching these changes. It will be so exciting. I really can't wait. <laughs> it is. I can't wait for it either. So uh, we look forward to seeing a lot of you there too. We want to meet you all in person. Um, so those are the predictions. Anything we missed, Joni, for the month of May? Let me go back. I think that's May 31st. Yes, that was oh. the Jupiter Rahu conjunction. And what's interesting is remember that Aries and Leo are getting activated 
really right. heavily because Saturn's aspect on all the planets in Aries, not to mention all the planets being in Aries, right. and the fact that Jupiter's fifth aspect on Leo and Saturn's opposing Leo. So this right. is these are the points of manifestation. So right. make sure you you make, you know, especially when Jupiter and Rahu are together, you know, manifest something for yourself. It's an mm -hmm. amazing time to manifest, you know, make that intention. Right. It's true. I mean, manifestation is so powerful during this time. I mean, the energy is so powerful during this time. There will be a huge life change uh, for everyone this period of time. And mm -hmm. you can use this energy to empower yourself and change and transform your life. So empowerment leads to manifestation. So we're in it all together. All of us as a human race, we're all in this together. And so much is about to transform and change in the world. And I'm looking forward to it. And I'm here yes. to help everyone give guidance during this time. Yeah. And, and, you know, the destruction is required, people, right? We need to have this so we can come out and construct something new. That's the whole idea and the concept behind the dancing Shiva. Right. Joni talked about it a couple of months ago, you know, as he dances on the illusion. So he's stepping on the illusion because that's telling us something that's not real. And uh, he's destroying the, the existing status quo. And he's creating something new with the music that he has in his right hand. Mm -hmm. So that's, that's the dancing Shiva. So this is the time we are in right now. And this is why things like the conference where people can come together, it is so important because these are like-minded people. We all come together. We talk about these positive things. We are raising human consciousness, mm -hmm. mass consciousness. So I think it's amazing, Joni, that you're doing it at this time. And we thank you for having the conference at this time of the year. Thank you. It took a lot of study to figure out what is the best day for a conference. <laughs> I studied every day of the year and this was it. And I know it's going to be amazing, successful. And most of all, I look forward to meeting everyone in person, making new friends mm -hmm. and new connections. That's really, really why I wanted to have a conference above all else to bring people together and find that connection. You know, they say when you bring groups together, the power of manifestation is more powerful um, and that's what we're here to do. And we're here to expand in knowledge, awareness, and spirituality. And that's why we all got into Vedic astrology, isn't it? So yeah, I think with that, we'll, we'll leave you, we'll close. And I'm looking forward to meeting everyone that's going to come to the conference here in Dallas. Thank you for joining us today. Namaste. Namaste.